Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here up at East Canyon. And Mickey, you can't have Audrey Wilson with the USA Fly Casting team with you. And not throw a cast and have her look at you and see what you're doing right uh, or wrong. Right. I, man, I was struggling today. I kept hitting the rod and I don't know why. Hit me in the back so, of the head. So. <laughs> that might have been intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Probably. But I think she ought to look at our cast and kind of give us some I ideas. hope she will. Yeah. She'll help. So what I think I was doing, I was trying to, I was kind of changing direction. I think I was swinging it around. Yeah. Is that ever a problem, cause a problem? Yes, I think when you said you hit your rod, so if your rod tip isn't traveling in a straight path, wherever you're sending your rod tip is where your line's gonna go. So if you change it to a curved path, and you curve out and then try to go straight, well that fly line is still traveling this way and behind you, and comes back and hits your rod and sometimes the back of your head. <laughs> Give me a quick demonstration. I think it'll help a lot just to see you, Cass. Absolutely, let's do it. All right, so the straight line path of the rod tip. I have my rod tip traveling beside me in the cast in a straight line. I'm not curving it behind me and I'm not curving it in front of me. I'm traveling it in a straight line path. That makes it so the line also travels in a straight line and isn't curving behind me and coming back and hitting me in the head or hitting my rod tip potentially. When you're casting, does the shape of your loop ever really make a difference? Yeah, so the more open your loop is, the less aerodynamic it's gonna be, which is harder to control and you're not gonna have as much power. So you want your loop to be- So what, what causes it to be more open? So if it's more open, that means you're pointing your rod tip way too far behind you or way too far in front of you, which opens that cast way up and creates that big loop. You want the rod tip to stop higher. And is the speed that the rod's moving, does that have anything to do with the, the loop size? Yeah, so that's a good question. You want a smooth application of power in the cast, not super fast and jerky. It's just, just enough to get that fly line moving and smoothly accelerating in the cast. Now what if you accelerate too soon? If you're trying to accelerate and you accelerate too soon, then what happens? Yeah, so that's actually called creep. If I come forward too much and creep, it's gonna cause a tailing loop where your fly line dips below the other leg of the fly line. And we like to call them wind knots, but they're not actually <laughs> wind knots. The wind didn't do it, you did it. Right, <laughs> exactly. There's a lot to learn when it comes to fly fishing and fly casting, even for an expert fly fisherman like Mickey and an inexperienced angler like Hunter. It's something we can't show you in three to four minutes of TV, so my advice, get out and practice. And if you have a nagging issue, stop by Fish Tech and get a hold of Audrey.